So what do you get when you add Super 10 to a 1650? The 1660 Super has been there in the market for a lot of time now. But I think I am too late to the party and most of you have already left. But I think there are still some of you which are watching this video. This variant from Mino 3D costs about 21,000 Indian rupees or about 280 US dollars right now. So let's see how it performs in both games and some software too. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So Inno 3D is a well-known brand but doesn't get much attention as let's say an Asus or a Gigabyte. But they are reliable nonetheless as their GPUs do come with 3 years of warranty. And actually at a very competitive price. For example, an almost similar spec card from Asus will cost 2400 rupees more which is 30 US dollars for the same 3 years of warranty. And actually without any RGB2 unlike this card which has it. Just make sure Inno 3D has a good customer service in your country. In the box you get a CD which uh, you can't run because really where are the CD-ROM drives now and a small card explaining the power requirements of uh, this and many other cards from Inno 3D which is actually good. Going through the specs quickly, this is a 6GB variant with 1408 CUDA cores and yes it doesn't support RTX which is fine when even some of the 2000 series budget cards uh, perform really poorly when it comes to uh, playing games with RTX on. So the RTX voice won't be supported too, but there is a workaround for that if you look on YouTube. This card's length is about 220 meter. Oh wow, 220 meter. 220 mm and height is 113 mm and hence it can fit most of the cases easily. The heatsink has three heat pipes and they come out in opposite directions of course. What's the point of all the heat pipes coming in the same direction and poking your eye? A small thermal pad can be seen here sleeping comfortably on top of the chip. The actual fan size was near about 8.5 centimeters. The car needs 8-pin power connector which is mounted on the top and the same plastic shell from its other variants can also be seen here which has a matte finish on it. And for display connectors, it comes with the HDMI 2.0B and free display port 1.4 support on it. And it can also support till 8K displays and if you own one of them then boy you are rich. Eno 3D has this software known as Eno 3D TuneIt to let you tune their cards and their lighting if the card supports it. Which has an easy mode if you don't want to fiddle in the advanced mode to overclock your cards uh, for that tiny boost which we get uh, by overclocking most of the cards. However, no matter what I did, I couldn't control the RGB of this card with its software. So the lighting of this card can't be tweaked which is a bummer actually. Uh, it will stay on its automatic rainbow mode. Rainbow mode. My setup runs on a Ryzen 3900X with 32GB of 3200MHz of RAM and an ASUS X570 motherboard in a Cooler Master MB520 case. Coming on to the benchmarks and uh, starting with gaming first, the card ran Counter-Strike GO at high settings comfortably at an average FPS of 140 at 1080p with some really low 1% and 0.1% low frame rate performance. But despite those numbers, my actual gameplay didn't suffer at all and the card actually ran cool and stable. Even at 4K resolution, it did give a good stable average uh, 99 FPS but yeah, those 1% and 0.1% lows definitely suffered. In Fortnite at 1080p in epic settings, it gave a good stable 100 average FPS which is actually excellent but in 4K it was unplayable. Fortnite truly knows how to eat all your GPU power easily. In Shadow of Tomb Raider at its highest settings at 1080 the game was quite fluid as it did reach the 76 FPS mark as an average FPS with decent 1% and 0.1% low frame rate performance. And at 4K it did somehow manage to give a steady 28 average FPS but yeah I need to tone down some of the settings if I need a smoother gameplay at 4K for this game. The 1660 Super's uh, Unigen Super Position scores were about 35% better than its younger sibling the 1650 Super. Now let's see how those 1408 CUDA cores perform in some software tests like video rendering on Premiere for a H265 codec for a 4 minutes 4K clip. The 1660 Super took about 2 minutes and 20 seconds for the clip to render which was about 12% faster than the 1650 Super's performance and just 16% slower than its hulkier sibling the 2070 Super. A key shot render on GPU mode took about 80 seconds which was about approximately 3 times slower than the 2070 Super proving how the 1600 series cards are not meant for GPU rendering if you do a lot of that. But the performance to its younger sibling the 1650 Super wasn't that wide. During most of my tests, the average temp stayed uh, around 71 degrees Celsius which was impressive for the load i3 on this card. 
the noise levels were fine too the fans noise wasn't uh, audible at full load to me actually so for about 35% more cost as compared to the 1650 super you do get about a similar boost of 30% or about 35% in some cases but only in games but in rendering videos or 3d stuff the performance boost is not worth paying the extra price my monitor doesn't support 1440p at 24 hz so could i couldn't test these games at that resolution if you are on a tightier budget i have also posted a review of the 1650 super from ano 3d which you can also check i'll post the links in the description and i think that's about it hit a like and sub with the bell if this video helped you in any way stay safe humans and stay indoors and stop doing the 1660 and 1650 math see you in the next video mewbot out